This is very much a lived experience audio. I'm going to relay some things. For those of you who like to pay keen attention to your own lived experiences, and I'm not using the term ironically anymore, I'm going to use it appropriately, because it's not a term any of us should mock, you know, inner experience, inner life. Uh, for those of you who like to pay attention to your own, you might get something out of this, but still late October, I was talking about how I was out of it, and I'm still not going to point out what I was out with mid-October. Um, there had been this, I forgot how many, but I think something between 10 and 12 days where uh, I was just, I was awake for maybe like six hours and asleep for four, and that was my cycle. <laughs> that's, how, that's how out of it I was. Awake for six, sleeping for four, that just across 10, 12 days, something like that. It was a surreal experience I'd never had. I'd never experienced anything quite like that. Uh, I had to go on pain meds. I took whatever it was called, Tylenol Turbo, some extra kind of potent Tylenol. And I don't take this stuff usually. I also took some uh, ordinary Advil. Uh, the med story is kind of relevant because I'm comparing it to the last time. I was really out of it with a sickness. That was 2013. Had a high fever. And there I took something beyond these simple pain meds. But what happened in 2013 is that the medication I was taking, it was shorter. It was like a week tops back then. But the medication I took and had to take, uh, it made me full on depressed for the duration of the time I was taking it. And now in these 10 or 12 days in October, um, I wouldn't say it was depressing, but it made everything seem very bleak. So maybe borderline depressing, but it stopped short of a depression, but it made everything seem super bleak. Uh, it did kind of distort colors. Just this Tylenol Turbo stuff that I took, it, it started distorting colors. Maybe it's just because it coincided with a especially rainy period here. In, in Vancouver and it was really just gloomy so maybe that was part of it but I did see colors in a somewhat more dim way but in terms of affect it was just the bleakness of everything and it just utterly crushed any semblance of a motivation to do the stuff that I love to do and not only that what this simple turbo Tylenol painkiller did was it made me believe, and this is not an exaggeration, this is, this is what I believed, I was, I was so confident. I was confident that even when I recover from this, and I had a semblance that the pain meds might be doing it, but it hadn't fully crystallized, but during that time, things were so bleak that I thought I would carry on viewing everything as bleak from here on out, and that I wouldn't have the motivation to do any of the things that I typically like to do. Like I go back home and I walk back home and I like to get high, I like to listen to music, record audios, listen to audiobooks, do things of this sort. Uh, when I was in the throes of this, mid-October, I thought I would just stop. Even when I fully recover physically and then in terms of affect, when I recover, when things no longer seem bleak, the bleakness was so powerful that it made me believe in my heart of hearts that my motivations to do the stuff that I like to do are stupid and pointless, right? It wasn't just YouTube that I'm not gonna work on anything YouTube related anymore. Like I, I found it hard to picture to myself any kind of motivation to do the stuff I love to do. Um, and what accompanied that, and I'm only able to see it now, was a certain kind of monotony of thinking that led to a predictability of thinking and, and certainly a stunted mindset. I had a stunted mindset, so stunted, that it convinced me that things that I know I love, I love to do, uh, that they were not worth doing. But this wasn't emotionally crushing, right? Because I just resigned myself that those things weren't worth doing and will not be missed. But now that I'm back, I'm just, I'm just back in the swing of things, evidently, since I'm recording so many of these goddamn audios. Uh, but yeah, I thought, I essentially thought that I had recorded my last audio because why would I record an audio? What would be the point of this? But it's that, it's that monotone mindset that I had instilled in me through this kind of sense of bleakness and thus a predictability of thought. And I'm just, there are pessimists online who push for pessimism and who think it's like life or death. We have to convince the world to see things our way. And that's the whole point of even commentary on the internet. And 
I, I'm not going to say that was my view during that time, but if there would have been something that would have presented a semblance of a motivation, it would have been something like that. Persuasion. And I don't want to accuse people of having monotonous minds, especially these, you know, whether it's these activist-minded pessimists, but it does just seem that there's a host of people online who should know better, who should know that the purpose of philosophy is not in any way related to action in the world. And again, I know it's going to seem insulting, but the only way you can get in that spot where you think the, the purpose of philosophy is to in some way affect how you do action in the world, ordinarily, I always say these are um, apples, oranges, so on and so forth. Uh, but I almost forgot that when I was in this bleakness mode <laughs> during my sickness, during my having been out of it. Um, and so whatever it is where you lack that versatility of thinking, which I do see now that it's linked to motivation. What motivates me to do stuff is my versatility of thinking in the ordinary case. What crushes it is a monotonous kind of thought process. And I just wish that whatever, if you're one of these people who thinks it's weird that people are motivated to be just philosophical for its own philosophical sake, and you're a pessimist, and you think the world sucks, um, just think back to your past. Think about certain things that you may have taken in the past or kind of just areas you may have inserted yourself in just geographically where you kind of spotted more versatility in your thinking as opposed to monotony because I have to connect it to monotony the lack of motivation to just do things let's think about conceptual puzzles that's just you're just haunted by a monotonous kind of brain and just as in my case, that's not my natural original state. That's just the state when I kind of get hopped up on weird drugs, pain med style drugs, uh, whereas pot does the opposite. Pot makes it makes me even more versatile in my thinking. Um, I would just, as, as another bit of life advice, <laughs> you probably do have somewhere deep within your layers the same kind of appetite for conceptual puzzles for their own sake. It's just, in many other people's case, it has to be brought out through some sort of exogenous, through some sort of external tool. So with me, it's the external tool that stunts it and nullifies it. Whereas in many other people's cases, the external tool might be something that lights it and, and lights it on fire. So just think back to your past. Think back to what kind of external circumstances in your life led you to have that kind of versatility. Because with versatility will come the motivation. The motivation to either produce a work of philosophy, if you like to write, you know, or, or poetry, or one of these, you know, ennobling ennobling pursuits. Pessimism doesn't mean it's pointless to do things apart from convince people to be pessimists. Uh, pessimism is just, it's just bang on as a kind of analysis of the world as far as we can do it with this limited noggins that we had. Um, but yeah, it's, it's all about that versatility to monotony spectrum and where you fall there naturally and if naturally you're further from the versatility just just try to think back to your past and recall what exactly it was that made you bump in the direction of versatility to the extent that it's ever happened with you and once you do that you'll see just how um i don't want to use harsh terms because i'm i'm sympathetic to my you know fellow pessimists but they're just so consumed with the idea of anything being worth doing. It's that pushing of pessimism as action in the real world. Instead of just coming up with more and more fascinating conceptual puzzles to, you know, muzzle over. Um, so yeah, I was really sick in, in 2013. The meds I took led to a full-blown depression. Uh, but I hadn't been at that point the kind of person who paid uh, close enough attention to his inner life, so I didn't put two and two together back then. October 2023, <laughs> with this bleakness phase I had, now I'm able to put two and two together. There are external and internal forces impacting our, wherever we fall, on the monotony to versatility in thought spectrum. And people need to think more about where exactly they fall and how they can remedy it. Because versatility of thought is an objective good. I'm just going to come right out and say it. And monotony is an objective bad. 
Uh, anyone wants to challenge that? Any nihilist wants to challenge that? Fight me, bro. If something's good for you, in any sense of good, it is that versatility and the monotony is bad. Whatever you got to do to hack yourself such that you're more in line with versatility, I suggest you do it. And then you'll see that philosophy is its own reward. Virtue might not be its own reward, but philosophy and good, crisp, clear-eyed philosophy is its own reward. Um, and you'll never accomplish the other thing anyway, you know, running for mayor as a pessimist or whatever, running for president. Even if we had a president, I would still say we shouldn't organize a president who was like an out-and-out -out pessimist. Even then I would say, let's not organize. I'll flash that as a record right now. I'm done.